<laughs> there I am. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is new on Facebook here. Hey, good morning, everybody. This is David R. Becker with Becker Art, and here today, um, I was supposed to have a class. Um, I usually have a class on Saturday mornings, but the studio has got some problems with the electricity, electricity, and so we're going to be doing my demo, my 11 a.m. demo that I normally do in class. We're going to do here live on Facebook, and I normally I'm on YouTube. I just want to um, go live on Facebook once and just tell you people from Facebook, come on over to um, come on over to YouTube and subscribe to my channel there. Uh, and Thursdays I do a paint along every Thursday, and so here um, here we're going to do it today in Facebook and see how this works. And, and so please let me know if you're hearing this. <laughs> um, I'm not I'm not used to doing it on Facebook, but um, if you're hearing it, hey, hey Aggie. Uh, it looks like it's working, so that's good. So I'm just going to get going here. And if you guys can... I'm hoping you see me. Do you see me? <laughs> All right, because I'm using a, a program. Ah, oh, cool. Yes, she says I'm on. All right, so thanks a lot, guys. So let's get started here. So today we're going to do a um, demonstration of wet and the wet and i'm going to be doing this image right here let me go over to this image and um, like i said i usually do these on i usually do demonstrations and paint alongs on thursdays and so today we're going to try just to kind of show you guys what i do on thursdays and then you can paint along um, so what i'm going to do here is first i'm going to give you what we're going to be painting so this is what we'll be painting and um hey becky hey aggie <laughs> there's gloria uh, so thanks i'm hoping you see this and so um here's the imagery that we're going to be painting and here's my line drawing and i just want to show you real quickly that when we do the drawing I, I change the things around a little bit i make it black and white and i kind of posterize it this time and so what we're going to do is we are going to take and here's this image i can't even see the arrow because it's white and white but you can tell what i did is i took this uh, flower right here and i pasted it up and i drew it up a little bit over this over the branch right here made my flower bigger put it more into the center of interest area in this area and so we just kind of do things like that and um i'm going to do this hopefully really quickly over a half an hour i'll be painting it not in a half an hour i will paint it in half an hour or so <laughs> So if you have questions, like um, on my YouTube channel, um, I'm going to be looking on the side. I can see your questions, and I will try to answer them. So here we go with um, my tabletop. And we're also going to, um, because I, I introduced the uh, airbrush last Thursday into my thing, and I just want to show the people here again. And this quick thing, I was going to show the class today, and my class normally in, in, in McHenry, Illinois, I was going to show them my um, airbrush that I'm going to be using. That's another way of using um, the watercolor. So we're gonna see what, how that works today. And so let's get started here. I use Holbein paints. Let me just show my supply list, which I wanna show everybody. This is what I use for my supplies. And it's Holbein watercolors. Very good watercolor, very professional. I don't have to put in fresh paint every time because it's, it's good paint that doesn't dry to a hard clump. And it doesn't have oxgall, so it's really great. My brushes I use, I have my brushes, I have six brushes that I sell on my website. They're Holbein brushes also, which is with my name on them, so they're, but they're pretty good. They're very good, actually. <laughs> and so here's the paper we're going to be using is Stonehenge Aqua, and that's what we're using. And so let's get back to going here. And um, welcome, everybody, this morning. Let me just, um, usually we cheer, <laughs> but I have my coffee, so cheers. <laughs> we don't have a beer this morning. I'm not going to drink this morning. <laughs> so I'll wake myself up here. And so uh, let's get started. I could have used masking fluid on this flower right here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet everything because everything is out of focus back here. I'm going to do that wet into wet. So today's lesson will be wet into wet, and what I'm going to teach today in class is that you're going to do wet into wet up here and all around the background. And I could have masked this out, and you can mask it out with uh, this tape. I have this tape that Holbein sells. This is soft tape. I could have put that on there, cut it out with an exacto knife. You can use um, masking fluid. You can use that on it. But I'm going to paint around it, and I'm just going to paint around it and give a hard edge. And then I'm going to just do this all this wet and wet in the wet. And the colors, um, it's going to be full colored. I'm just going to kind of go in and wet this whole area, wet around my flower. Real quickly, wet around my flower. If you want to use um, and uh, use this image and do your own 
and do the same thing. It's fine. This is a um, image I found on unsplash.com where they have royalty free images. And so I looked it up this morning. I found one. It's just a magnolia, magnolia tree right in the sp spring here. So, so see how I'm wetting it really a lot. I'm putting a lot of water on there. You can almost see the difference because the guy is a little bit darker. So that's all wet and I just went around my petals. And so I'm going to go right away and try to get everything done in that wash. I'm not going to try to do two washes on there. I'm going to try to get this done and that's control. And the way to control your edges in water, wet into wet, is using a little bit more pigment to control that edge. So the more pigment I use, the less it's going to bleed. So if I, let's say I put a little, I'm just going to put a little bit of water in here just to show you. If I put a lot of water with a little bit of pigment, here's a little bit of blue, and I just drop it in there, of course it's going to go everywhere. There's no control of that because it's going to go everywhere. Hey Mary, good morning. The best place, Agnes, to buy the, um, I get to buy the um, paper is from like, uh, what do you call it? Um, Cheap Joe's has it, Blix has it, and Stonehenge Aqua. You can buy it in pads or you can buy it in sheets. And they make 300 pound. I like 300 pound. They make 140. They make hot press, cold press. This is Legion Stonehenge Aqua. So again, see how I'm not controlling the edge? Um, it's just bleeding all over and that's how I get my soft edges. But this flower over here, I'm going to have to do a dark behind it to create it. But first you do your lights. For all your new, newcomers here to my classes, you always work light to dark. I work light to dark usually. Well, actually always. I always work light to dark. And here's a little opera right there. I'm going to put a little opera in this one. Going to be a little bit of right in here just to get the, the flower. And you notice how I put a little bit more pigment, not so much water on my brush. And if I want to alleviate the water in my brush, what I do is I put it on my towel here. I work on a towel, uh, for anybody new here too, I work on a towel so I don't have to have paper towel in my hand. I just wipe it out here anywhere on my, on my, on my counter here. And so I'm just going to put this in here like this. And I will put a little color into that. I don't have green in my palette, so I mix it with Cronacidum Gold and any of my blues. I'll just put that in here. And again, the thicker the paint is on my brush with no water, I can just turn my brush around, get the water out, and put, use the other side for getting capturing the pigment in my brush. And so then I can just go in there and manipulate the pigment and make the edge that I want. I want to make a little bit of an edge. And again, water on water doesn't be, you won't be able to control the edge. So make sure that you have a lot of pigment in your brush and not that much water if you want to make the edge. So I'm really quickly, and like I said, this is going to be done. When I get done with that, I'm never going back into that because I want to keep it soft edged. If I want a hard edge, then I wait for it to dry. That's how you get hard edges. You wait for things to dry. But I'm just going to work in here until I get it the way I want it. And now you also have to remember as a watercolorist, it dries 20% lighter than what you see right here. It's going to dry 20% lighter because once that water is evaporated, it's whatever pigment you have left. So you got to learn how to make it look wrong and make it look a little bit darker than you want it to make it look right. If it looks right while it's wet, it's wrong. That was one of my sayings that I, I've always taught my students that if it looks right while it's, while it's wet, it's not, it's not there, you know, it's wrong. So here I'm going to go in here and just kind of controlling the edges. And so here I'm just, like I said, I'm getting the edges. In the background, I'm waiting for it to dry a little bit because I want to get a little bit of a, um, little bit of a, I'm going to like spread it a little bit and get a little bit of a pattern in there. And I want everything to be soft edge though, so I have to have it wet. And so here now I'm going in with a little bit of these um, Horizon Blue, which is my light blue. And these demos I usually do in half an hour to 20 minutes on, or, um, in my classroom well, because I wait until the very last minute to do the, the demos. But this one will probably be a little bit longer than half an hour only because I'm going to use a couple of things that I want to show. And I uh, hope you won't mind. I think most of you won't mind. And you can go back and you can shut off anytime you want and go back and look at it later too. So here I'm going with the dark now and a lot of pigment in my brush. And see how it's not bleeding? And it looks really dark, right? But don't worry about that because it will get a lot lighter than that. And I'm mixing my greens here and see how thick this is over here. 
And while it's wet, I am creating the shapes that I want to have there. And it's never going back into that after this dries. So I got to keep it wet. And I also have one of these spray bottles. So if it starts, start, starts drying a little bit, I can just wet it a little bit like this. You want to keep it wet if you want soft edges. Now I'm going to go around here. Now if the color is light, let's say the color is light, but I'm using a dark color and I cannot use it thin because like I said, if I use it too much water, that's how sometimes you get a dark color to look light is you put it in the water, but let's say, but you can't control that. So if you need to have a dark color lightened, but you need to control the edge, what do you do? You use white. And that's one of the things that, um, the reason I use white, I mean, a lot of watercolors don't use white only because it's makes it, um, uh, Kind of pastel like and we've learned in schools never to use white and watercolor because it's, it's transparent watercolor not opaque watercolor but i've come to find out that if you use a thick pigment of a dark color you want to lighten it up and you want to make it like like i said you want to control the edge you have to have a lot of pigment and if it's a too dark a pigment and you can't get it lightened use white lighten up the color with light with white it's still going to be transparent because what you're doing is you're floating it into a wet wash. So you'll still be fine. So see, how I'm, I'm creating a shape and it's all blurry. I want it to be um, blurry. And that's a very much a professional trait of a, a watercolor who knows what he's doing. And I get my students to do that because it's very important to learn how to control your edge. And it's not that hard if you just use enough pigment. Students that are new a lot of times won't use enough pigment because they because these paints cost a lot for one and they don't put fresh paint on them on the um, palette and so since I use Holbein it doesn't dry out then you can just really get the pure pigment really easily because it doesn't um, doesn't dry out like a hard clump and so I can go in here and I can just get get the shape I want with the amount of pigment and I'll still get that soft edge. Always got to take the brush or the um, water on my brush. And see, I'm going slow because I'm never going back into that area again. So I can, I can now go slow and just kind of get things done. And it is kind of, um, it's raining outside. So it's a little damp in here in my studio. And so it's going to take a little bit longer to dry, which is a good thing. So that's kind of good for me because then I can take, spend a little bit more time. If it was outside and plain air painting and the sun's on it, it would dry so fast. I would have to keep constantly wet it probably with that, with the water that I have there in the spray bottle. But I don't have to do that today because it, because it is kind of rainy and wet out there. So here we kind of do this. Thanks, Aggie, for putting my channel up there. I, um, that's you know, normally on Thursday nights I do a paint along, a free paint along. You can paint along. And on Tuesday, if you get my newsletter on my website, you know, I'll tell you what. I, and if you go to my newsletter or to my new website, you can see what we're painting on that Thursday. This is um, just a really impromptu um, class I did today only because my studio was closed. And so I like to, I had this painting ready to go. And so I thought, ah, what the heck? Might as well show you guys how to do this. Now you notice like the photograph over here, I'm not even looking at the colors. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not copying the colors. I'm doing my own color scheme. I, I don't like green very much. <laughs> People know that in my, in my classes. I don't like a green that much. I will put a little bit in there, but it's going to be um, a limited amount of green. I just like, I like the blues and I like the reds and orange and purple, of course, be my favorite color, which it's kind of weird. I haven't put any of that in there yet. So let me just do that right now. <laughs> so here we have a um, bud. Here we have a bud right here. Uh-oh, my screen just went away. Hold on. What's going on in here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I gotta see what you what you guys are doing. I want you asking a question. My screen just died. <laughs> here we go. All right, put a little bit of orange in there. And you notice how I'm painting around my flower here. And I will put in the dark stem in there um, in a little in a second. I am gonna stop right here because this is not wet. I didn't wet down here, so I'm gonna try to get this up, upper part done first before I start going down to the bottom part. Work the area and get it close to done as possible on top and before you move on. So here I, I put some buds in there. You don't really see the buds in the picture right there. So I'm just gonna make them up. I kind of made them up right here. Like there's gonna be some buds right here. And the nice thing about this too, is when you work like this, you can, you can wipe out. Watch this, I can just take my brush and I can wipe out things. 
I can wipe out areas. So if I want like a little bit of an area here. And later on, you see the stencil I have right here. I'm going to show you how to use a stencil on your painting too. So that's coming up at the end. So if it just didn't turn out, it's still going to turn out <laughs> in the end because I can always use a stencil to create a, a more interesting background if you want. So I'll show you how to do that too. So again, I'm trying to get this all done here. Quickly, 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 get this in here. Now this is gonna be a dark petal on top of a light background. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker than the background. And then I will still put in the dark. I don't really need to have the branch that I think is dark. I, I don't need to go in there and make sure that my branch is soft edge. But if you do want it soft edge, now's the time to put it in while it's wet. You can put it in when it's not wet too, and it's okay to have some hard edges. But in the photograph, I kind of like that look of where it's all, where it's all soft edged. And the only way you get soft edges is to work wet into wet. There's no blending in watercolor, like blending afterwards. You can wipe out and stuff, but blending you try to do with wet into wet. It blends for you. The watercolor does the job for you. You don't need to do the blending. So see, I'm using a thick amount of pigment. This is almost like I'm picking up acrylic. I'm not even, I don't have any water in there at all. It's all just pure pigment because the water is here. And if I use it really thick like this, look at how I can make an edge in a wet wash. So just that's the biggest thing about working wet in a wet is making sure you have enough pigment. It's not that hard as people make it out to be. And, um, you know, as I'm not following, I'm overlapping this and not following the picture again. Because the picture um, is just there for reference. I can change things. As the artist, I want to change things because there may be things I want to put in there that make the painting look better. All right, so there's that part. You see how it's blurred out? And if I want to get those round edges, let's say sometimes you see those round things where it's like the camera. It's So I'm just going to pull out. I'm just going to rotate my brush on here. And I can add water into that, and it'll make even a watermark. If I add water into an area that's kind of damp, I'll make these little little round watermarks and see I'm wiping off my brush and absorbing the, the pigment. I'm absorbing the pigment and the um, water so I want to put water back into that and then it'll act as a little bit of a give me a little bit of a watermark. Just gonna make some of these really round so I'm just spinning my brush to make these little little dots like things here. You can rub out, you know, as well, while it's wet, you can do all this stuff. You can rub out, you can scrape, you can add salt to it. You mostly have to do it when it's in this state where it's not totally dry and it's not super wet. It's like a little bit damp and that's when you do all your, you do all your work. Your brush should never be wetter than the surface. If your brush is too wet, wetter than the surface, what happens is you get watermarks. Watch this, I'll get watermarks. I'm just gonna drop down some, some, pig, some little bit of droplets and they're going to make they're going to make little watermarks because it's at that point where it's going to separate there's more water and it's going to make watermarks or blossoms some people call it in watercolors call them blossoms or so that just happens when you have too much water there's more water than on the paper and the paper is drying all right so now let's go to the bottom part get that done and so i'm going to wet this whole bottom part area now with my bigger brush again sorry i haven't been looking for um Thanks, Aggie, for putting my website up there, too. Aggie has a place up, I think, in um, Kenosha. If you ever, she has a studio up there, and I think she gives lessons online also. So check out Aggie's um, website. Put your website up there, Aggie. They can see where you're from, too. Let's see. Ask, yeah, like I said, ask questions. If you need to ask questions, do it in the comments section on Facebook here. I'm look, I'm watching it once in a while. I'll look up. Can't look up every time, but here I'm going to go wet the bottom. See, I'm wetting the bottom. It has a little bit of color in it, and I call this a tint. There's not much pigment in there, and it looks. I'm going to want to burst this out with a really nice dark in there. And so I've been using a lot of different colors, a lot different from what you see up in this picture right here. So um, I'm gonna though I'm gonna stick with these colors, and so I'm gonna stick with a little bit of green because I got green up here. Then I went to a blue, and so down here it's gonna be a little bit warmer. I'm gonna go with a little bit warmer colors, and I'm dipping into my light red. This is called light red. I hope I can call this light red. It's kind of a terracotta or burnt orange kind of look. 
And then I'm going to go in and throw some other colors in there because it's wet and it'll give me soft edges. And later on, if I just make this smooth, I can use my stencils. I can make my stencils and I can do some really cool stuff in that too. So I'll show you later how that works. I'm not watching the clock. Um, I'm just going to go with whatever time it, happen it takes to do this. Um, usually uh, my Thursday nights are exactly an hour, an hour long. And I usually try to get right on, on schedule with that. I'm pretty good at that because of my job as a storyboard illustrator. When jobs had to get done at a certain time, I would have to get them done. So yeah, I really got good at knowing how long it takes me to do things. So here I'm just kind of going in here, wetting these areas, and then applying pigment. Horizon Blue is a really beautiful color. It's kind of a turquoisey blue, light blue, that has white in it. Um, and I know that a lot of these um like twsa which is actually they have a show right now in kenosha if you're up in kenosha go check it out um, i have a piece in there but th they don't allow opaque uh, they allow opaque colors if you work them like this wet into wet and they become transparent because you can make a opaque color transparent by just putting it into the water Yeah, um, yeah, Jenny. Um, most of the most of the um, magnolias are all bloomed out here too. Um, I was going to actually do a lilac um, painting to this morning, but I couldn't find a good image, so so I went with um, magnolias instead. So see how all this stuff is just floating down there? Isn't that fun? You know, that's all kind of fun stuff you get there. So that's my background, and pretty much um, it for my background. This petal right here, this bud. I'm going to make it a little bit harder than it is because I want it to kind of come forward a little bit. And so I'll do parts of it where it's soft edge and parts of it where it's hard edge. So we have a little bit of both in this one. So I'll put a little bit of the color in there for the bud. And then we do the, we do the let's see, let's do the parts of the parts that are dark because pretty much that's my whole background and my lights and I'm not going to touch it anymore back there unless it, when it dries it kind of gets too light in some areas or if I want to have a little bit of something hard edged or if I want to rub something out like like I see I kind of lost this petal right here I can't do anything right now because I lost the sheen that's one way of telling if you don't want to go in an area or you can't go in an area is when you lose the sheen because then it's not wet and I'm not floating my pigment so you have to be able to float your pigment because that makes it transparent so you have to be able to float your pigment to do a wash on there. Otherwise, you get a watermark. If you want to get a watermark, that's a perfect time to do it when it's dry like that. And I can actually show you. Watch this. I'm going to, put a little, I'm going to spray little dots in there. You're going to see little dots come in there. It's going to spray up there because it's dry. And if I have a little dots, it'll make little, little like, like you put salt on it. Some people use salt on their paintings. And so now I'm just going to do the... I'm using pure pigment again. See this pigment, how it easily rejuvenates. I mean, I didn't use it since Thursday. And so it's like, it, you just put a little bit of water and it automatically rejuvenates. That's the greatest thing about Holbein paints. And most of the other companies don't have that. There are a couple other companies that say they have, um, or like I know they use um, for their binder, because that's what the binder is. It's, it's, they use Oxcall and Holbein doesn't use Oxcall. So we're just going to put this on there. And their colors are so vibrant. They're, they're so intense. And you don't have to use much paint to get the intensity. It's so ground in, so finely ground, and it's such a bright colors. Love the company. Love their colors. Love their, love their, it's a, it's a, um, they're out of Japan, Japanese company that, um, they're really into their products and making them good. Everything they, everything they touch, these brushes that I use, um, they are phenomenal for the price that you get them at. It's just amazing brushes. And so see, I'm just making the pure thickness of the of the paint. It's, it, it's in a wet wash. This is all wet down here. I'm going to get a soft edge. And I don't even need to have a soft edge here. But I always like to put it in there anyway soft. And then later on I can harden up parts of it. And so then you have that look of some of it hard edged and some of it soft edge, which is great look. I mean, it's just a fantastic look to do that. 
And the nice thing about it, if you're working wet in the wet, I can put darks on top of um, lights on top of dark. So right here, let's say I want to have a little bit of light on top of that branch, like it's lit up on one side. I can just put this light blue in there because it's floating. It'll just it'll just go right on top and just float and look very transparent. There, Aggie put her stuff on um, on her online classes. So go check out Aggie's, um, she's out of Kenosha. She also does some classes and parties and all kinds of things. So I think she just did something with glass. I just saw on our website, she did something with glass. That was really cool. Go check it out. So here I'm just gonna put a, um, another little stem in there. Cause there's probably stems that you don't see. They're gonna be soft edged and you can make them really light Lay on top of dark. See how I can just kind of go in there and um, keep those things soft edged. If you want to practice soft edge, take a sheet of paper, like a sheet of maybe even scrap paper that you a painting that didn't work out. Use the back, and then just try to um, work wet and wet. Wet the whole piece of paper, and then just see if you can't control the edges in it. And it's just so fun to try to do that because that's how you learn. Um, it's so important. I have all my students in my classes. My next class is actually going to be up in um, Wisconsin. At the, um, actually, let me think. Uh, I think there may be one up at the D DAI, the Duluth Art Institute, which I'm doing an acrylic class up there, a two day class, I think in July. And then I've got the ones at Dillman's. I have a watercolor class in Dillman's coming up. And look at their website. I think right now they're actually doing a demonstration. Somebody's doing, I think Don Andrews is doing a demonstration right now. So you can switch back to him. <laughs> He's also on Facebook. You switch back and forth because this is going to be live. I mean, it's live now, but it'll be able to see it again later. All right, so now we're going into the big flower already. And um, I, I wanted to show you also, before I do this, I wanted to show you I have an airbrush right here. And I showed people on Thursday that you can use an airbrush in watercolor. And I learned the fact that I looked at the Kenosha um, TWSA show. And I noticed that a bunch of artists there, their paintings, I could tell they used an airbrush because it was such fine work. And um, I know you can get a really fine edge in that, but some of the things that I saw, like they would put a, a wash over everything, like put a little glaze of uh, wash in. It just was too, um, looked like a, a airbrush. And if it didn't do it as an airbrush, then they're fantastic. I, I couldn't believe they could do it that way. But an airbrush is, I, I put the, um, in this, in the um, details of this, video um in my up there on, on facebook in the description of this video i put uh, a link to amazon where you can get one just very close to this is not this exact one because i bought this a while ago but something like it then um what it is is just a simple airbrush and actually they use it for makeup i guess putting makeup on and um and that's what they sell them for but it's a really nice um, unit that's all by itself and you just you press the button here and it just turns it on and it just gets going and then here it has a little bit of a cup, a little bit of a cup in there. And I just, all I do is I put, let's say I want to have a little bit of pink in here. So I'm just going to take my brush, put some pink on my brush with a lot of water. And I'm just going to take it, let me just get this over here, over my palette so I don't put it on the painting. And I just kind of pour it in there. I'm getting a little bit of opera in there. And so I'm just going to pour it in here like this. See, I'm rubbing off the side of my brush. Holbein is the company I was talking about. I my screen went again. There we go. Oh, one second, I gotta go back. Okay, yeah, so what name to order from? You can order from um, all these Holbein products. You can order from like Blix.com, um, Dick Blix, or I think it's Blix.com. And then also um, Cheap Joe's, you can get Holbein products. They're out of, um, there's also Vermont Art Supply. They sell mostly a lot of um, Holbein products. All the cabins, and Aggie asked about the cabins in um, 
they're all they're all nice they're all um they're all different um things there's there's like it's almost like an apartment every each one of the cabins is like an apartment each room is like an apartment with the whole with the whole kitchen and everything set up in each one of them all right so here it is now i i just put a little bit of that um right in there and see i'm just gonna practice first on a sheet of paper again a little board here i got i'm just gonna just gonna, see some, just gonna spray a little bit and i sprayed a little bit of the dark one yesterday so see i'm just gonna spray this so what i'm gonna do is out here i'm just gonna kind of go real lightly on my flower and see the nice thing is it dries almost instantly because it's hardly using any water and it's making that edge it's just so light and you just go real close if I go really close and press a little harder, it's going to make it a little bit darker. But I don't want to use it for that. I'm just using it to make the really fine, soft mist of something on there. So if I wanted to, like, let's say, um, take a, a blue and put it over the sky, I could do that and just make it a little bit darker. So that's just, um, I noticed that they used that up in uh, Kenosha, so I just went and invested. I always had to invest it in one of them. And you can buy, there's all different types. There's a kind that you can use. That has like a, um, a battery pack right here and it's just right on the actual thing and just make sure you have a little bit of this pull thing which they all have and then some of them have cups instead of like little jars attached to them i like this because you can just put it in there really quickly and so that's that's the airbrush and i just wanted to show you guys that again and I, like i said there is a, a link an amazon link on the on the um on the page here on the, on facebook if you look on there all right so now let's do this little um flower here and we're almost done not sure how long I've been taking because <laughs> I forgot when I, I started at 11 so yeah it's almost half an hour and we're just gonna do this so it'll be a little bit more than half hour like I said I'm gonna take a little bit of pink and now it isn't wet because that is already dried I and mean, the airbrush makes things dry pretty quickly so see how I'm getting a hard edge and so if I want to get a soft edge in the on the flower first I would have to wet it first but I'm not because I already kind of put that light light color in there so with the airbrush and so i'm just going to go in here and then just give it a little bit darker hard edged i'm not, i'm using pink and pink in watercolor has white in it so if or if you don't have um pink um, on your palette use red and get yourself a tube of titanium white and then you can just use that mix in your red and then you'll have you'll have a pink and um i know it's like again you're using white but don't worry about that because you're diluting the white into the red to make the pink and so why shouldn't you be able to use the pink i mean pink is a great color i love using it with orange and making kind of a salmony color i love that color it's my fa one of my second favorite colors is the salmon color that you get from pink here's a um opera opera with white and orange oh that's just it's just such a nice color and so we're going to go in here and i added a, a petal on this side as you see in the photo there's no petal going this way i added that because i felt like it was like it probably was there at one time <laughs> or it or it's just that's the way that petal was but i want to make it a little bit more full i guess you could say So airbrush is just a new thing I started only because I, I've had it last year. I remember thinking, seeing that too last year on one of the shows where some artists are using airbrushes to get things really fine and really detailed. There's a lot of um, photorealism happening in watercolor. And so that's a lot of people use it for that you know, because they're getting such fine work and stuff. I don't do fine work, but hey, it's nice to get a nice soft edge like that. And so a little bit of purple and um, violet also helps a little bit. It makes it, that's kind of like graying up your violet a little bit. Let me see, I hear somebody saying something over here. Yeah, the airbrush that I have out there is like 45, 55 bucks. And that's a pretty good deal um, for, it's just, it's a very simple thing. It's not a professional airbrush, but I don't think you need a professional airbrush. You just need to blow a little bit of the air through that thing. Otherwise you can use one of these atomizers. That's what a lot of the artists use, these atomizers, where you blow through, you stick this into the, into your um, a little thing of water, a little jar or a cup. 
and then you blow through here and then you blow on your paper, which to me is just, a, it, you know, why not just use this it's so much easier? <laughs> I mean, a lot of, there are a lot of people who are using the atomizers and there's a lot of professional ones that I, that's a really cheap one, but um, it's one of those things you can do. It's just another, another tool. I mean, those are all just tools that you use in watercolor. All these other things that you like, I'm learning how to do the wet into wet. That's more important than using the tool. You know, that's, it's pretty simple to once you use the tool, but you have to use it in the right spot. You have to do all that stuff, all the coloring and all the wet in the wet is more important than you learning how to use that tool. You know, getting your soft edges where you want them and your hard edges where you want them will definitely um, supersedes learning how to use an airbrush. So learn how to use that first. Learn how to do this other stuff first before you start worrying about how to use an airbrush professionally. <laughs> all right, and so I'm getting here now with my hard edges. So this is on the bottom here is all dark. This is one petal here, so I'm going to mix some of the orange. So here now we're going to go with a little bit of the blue-green. And again, I'll make it nice and thick, again, to control the edge, make it nice and thick. Nice and thick. And let, one thing about watercolor that I love so much is that it does its own thing. If you can leave it alone and just let it bleed and let it do its thing and let it do what watercolor does best and that's wet in the wet or it's floating. If you can just let it do that on its own and let that look, that, that look is just so important to get. That's what the look of watercolor is. That's what it has that other um, mediums don't have. The look of just that floaty and the soft edges and that little like bleeding in like that. These are little fingers, I call them. Stuff like that you cannot do. You don't paint that, the watercolor does it for you. These little, little things like that, those little things, that just happens because of how you're working wet into wet. So work wet into wet and just have those things happen. And if you didn't do that wet into wet, if you don't have wet into wet, you can't have those things happening. And if you don't use enough pigment, it's not like you, because if you just do a tint, and I, I say when I say a tint, that's, that's when you use a lot of water with hardly any pigment. Not much happens there because then you're just getting a tint of color on it. This, you need a lot of pigment so that it does its thing. It's all about pigment because once that water is evaporated, you have nothing. You just have whatever pigment's left. So it's all about the pigment. How much pigment you use once that water's gone, get that pigment working for you. And that's how come I, I spend more money on the pigment than I would like on anything else because the pigment is so important and Holbein is such a great, great paint and it's so vibrant and the an amount of um, pigment that they use and it's so, um, what's, the, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, it's, um, I'll think of it <laughs> in a second. <laughs> all right, so let's see. Now, the only thing I have left this to do is the hard edges. That's all that's left and so, it has to usually be dry for that, but um, that's how you get hard edges, right? You, and so I'm using a small brush here. And while that's happening, let me just show you how to use a stencil. Because I might have to wait for this to dry a little bit to get this up here. And always check with, with the back of your hand to see if it's wet. Not with the front because you got oils on the front of your hand. And that you know, oils and um, watercolor don't mix. Actually, let me just go a little bit darker here in this edge right here. This is a little bit darker. Ask questions, don't be afraid to ask questions. And if you're new here, again, I do this every Thursday night around six o'clock and we do a paint along. And so, and then I also have a, a Facebook group. You can go on my Facebook group, Achieving Group. I gotta, I gotta put a link on there for my thing so people can understand where to go. And um, it's and they, everybody shows their work off, and it's kind of neat to see how everybody does the does the painting. And I usually use photographs that are from like unsplash them, so that don't have to worry about that. Like they're not they're um, photo um, royalty free. And I have to thank the photographer, and and you'll see who took the photograph and stuff, and I'll thank them. Which you don't have to, but I like to do that because it, I mean these are great photographers who are letting us use these photographs. Let's see how I'm doing hard edge now. 
I'm putting a hard edge in there. And I also have black in my palette. You see right there, that's black. And so having black, I put it in with a color. And so I start out with a really dark and then I put a color in there. So it still is really dark, but it's black. So I don't mind that. I know in school I was also told never to use black as a watercolorist, but I love it because you get you get the the um, the value really dark right away, and then you can just add color if you want to make the color into the into the light. Here I'm putting a little hard edges. See how the hard edges then bring things out, and then when you start working your darks, because most of this was light and middle tones, now when I put in my darks, they just really pop forward. Doesn't it? I mean, it's just popping forward now. And see how the soft edges pushes things back because that looks like it's blurred and soft edges in the background. And of course, it doesn't look anything like the photograph, but you know, don't worry about that. If you want to look just like the photograph, you're going to have to spend a little bit more time and making sure that you get the right colors and stuff like that. And I don't mind that. You know, you, I just don't have the patience to do that. <laughs> I never had the patience to do those really fine things where you're copying. And I was never really taught that way. I was always taught more like the this John Singer Sargent way, you know, and the um, Hopper and who are the artists that we always looked at. Homer, Hopper, all those guys <clears throat> did watercolors. They did this more traditional way and not just um, make it look like a huge high definition photograph. There are a bunch of teachers out there, though, if you do want to take them, there, um, Lynn Pratt is one. She does a great job on really detailed stuff, and she really shows how to do that. Let's see, I'm going to go in here, maybe do a little bit of hard edge in here, just a little bit. Okay, I was going to say, I was going to show you a stencil. Hold on, let me show you a stencil. That's the only thing left, basically. So let's say, actually, it's got to be dry. So up in here, I'm going to use this stencil. And what you can do is a stencil. I get these stencils at stencilgirlproducts.com. Stencilgirlproducts.com is where I get my stencils. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm just reading one of your questions here. Uh, any questions? I was just thinking the same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on here. I'm going to get a little bit of, you can either put in or take out. Um, putting in watercolor on a stencil, putting in so that you get the lines, like whatever you're having there, is a little bit harder because you have to go more dry brush. You can't do it with water because if you do it with water, what happens is it gets underneath it and it just makes it all sloppy and messy. But if you take um, and make it, let me just one thing, if I make this a, a petal there. If I want to make the background hard edged here, um, it's also going to make it kind of hard edged unless I use, I take a um, magic eraser. This is like, what do you call those? Um, Mr. Clean and magic erasers. You can get them at the dollar store too. They're just the same type of thing. They're that white, white sponge type of thing. I make it damp. I don't wet it. I, I wet it and I take, wring it all out and just make it kind of damp. And then what you can do is you can put it over like look for a stencil that these are very um the stencils i have are very uh, what do you call them they're not natural they're kind of like here i'll show you another one i have that i have a bunch of stencils i put them in these i put them in these um stamping stamping up things that no longer people do anymore and so if you look right here i have one they're a little bit more organic this is supposed to look like weeds or like the um spanish moss I do have ones like this, but those are not as organic as like some of these that look like just branches and such like that. Here's one that's all branches like. And so that's another thing you can use. But again, to do use them is just try this. Don't try this on a painting. Try it on like a scrap sheet of paper. Just put a bunch of washes down and then try it like that. So I'm just going to take my uh, magic eraser. I'm just going to rub a little bit. I'm just going to rub right, right here. I'm just going to rub a little bit of this out. To get a little bit of these branches in there. And my screen went again. Timed out. And so see how I get a little bit of these branches? Because what I'm doing is I'm getting the white of the paper back, but I'm getting a little bit of these lines in there. Now, if I want to put something in, then you have to use a brush with hardly any paint on it. And so let's see, I'll, I'll reverse it. So I'll put it up like this. And then I'll take my brush and really dab it. 
uh, and try to get all the water out of there and then just dab down on it. They do make stenciling brushes. Um, I have never used one yet and I know they, um, they're like those bristle brushes. I find these to be just as good. Just tap down and then you get a little bit of the lines in there. And so now I went dark and the lines are light, of course, because this one I'm rubbing out and whatever's underneath. And again, here even it was a little bit, uh, because I moved it a little bit and because it's a little bit wetter, it's a little bit harder to make it really hard edged. So let's do this again right here. Let me just take this again. And again, I said stencilgirlproducts.com is where you can get these um, really neat stencils. They have thousands, actually probably millions of stencils on, the, on their site. Again, I'm going to try to make this more um, so, uh, dry brushed. I'm just tapping down. And then I stencil it up. And there it did nothing. <laughs> A little bit. But it just shows you what you can do. So anyways, that's what some of the things you can do with, with the um, stencils. And again, if you look at um, some of my work on my on my my daily paintings, there's some in there. I've got uh, these 300 paintings in there. There's some of them that have stencil look on it. So just take a look at my daily paintings on my website, and you'll see some of the ones with a little bit better uh, uh, example of when you're using the stencil. Let me try a little bit down here too. I'll rub out a little bit. Let's see, we're gonna need a little white. Here, I'll put it right here. As you turn it around, watch this. So I'll take again, where's my sponge? Just rub out the light. Just rubbing like this. And so you get a little bit of the edges in there. And then, um, again, this was a little bit too wet too. <laughs> but you get the idea, you get the picture. Actually, let me do a little down here, I'll show you. Always wipe off your stencil too, after each time you're done, because that was my problem here on this one. I'm just gonna rub this out. Just rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. You look at it, see a nice little area in there? Just makes it look kind of neat. Now, you can go crazy with it too. You can go over, overboard with it sometimes. I did that once with a, when I did a uh, painting of a donkey and I made the whole background and it just made everything worse. But see how I got a little bit of it, just a little bit of touches. It kind of makes it look like you know what you're doing with um, negative painting, which is a hard thing to do. And if you want to take a class for negative painting, um, Linda Kipp would be the one you want to take for that. She's awesome on that. All right, one more thing, and then we're done here for today. And so I'm gonna go in here, just a little bit, a little bit of these. I'm gonna extend my what I just made with the um, with the stencil, like make some things up that look like the stencil, because you make the line like that. And this is gonna be just a little bit lighter, and then a little bit more definition in my actual flowers, like for the little veins in the flower. This is more photographic, not, not photographic, but this is more like a picture like. You can also add some, um, a nice thing about flowers, you can add some abstraction to them. I love the fact that sometimes you can make it look like a little bit different and you can put some like triangles or something in there or just make it look a little bit more abstract. And so that's not a bad thing. It's just a different way of um, painting when you have put a little abstraction in some of your work. And again, if you look at my if you look at my daily paintings page on my thing, you'll see some of the things that I've done with with abstraction to the the artwork. I'll put like rectangles or something in there, or dots and stuff like that. I've done a little bit more dark, and I think we're almost done here. All right, let me take the tape off and show you what it looks like. If any questions, put them up there. I got, I'll look afterwards and stuff too to make sure that um, I can see. So a little bit more than half an hour, but we had a little talk beforehand anyways. <laughs> so here we go. Let's take the tape off. And this tape I'm using is also an whole bind tape. It's called soft tape. And it, it, it comes in these little rolls and it, it was a little bit thicker. I've used a lot of it, but it's pretty wide and stuff. And um, it's, it's a tape that you can also get from like Vix and it's called soft tape. It doesn't allow the pigment to go back in, but it doesn't have so much uh, gum on it that it tears the paper. So sometimes you can get that, and it's great for making um, frisket. Like when you wanna, like say, use, instead of using masking fluid, you can use it on like the area where you wanna keep white. All right, so there you have it. There's the image as it was. And so I hope you guys have a great, great rest of the morning. 
actually it's probably lunchtime right here almost <laughs> so have a great lunch everybody and um i will talk to you again on thursday so look check out my newsletter on thursday or my website on tuesdays to find out what i'm painting on youtube on my youtube channel and definitely subscribe on my youtube channel and so then you'll always get um ideas what i'm doing and they and you know every thursday at 6 6 a.m all right so have a great have a great weekend and i will see you on thursday bye bye everybody oh, wait let me just uh, i gotta say goodbye <laughs> i gotta see you guys there you go <laughs> so um have a great weekend and we'll see you next next um thursday all right bye bye